All right, we're back with the Opie and Anthony program. Lots going on. Anthony was just talking about this uh, movie you saw. So yes, I o- did. Over the weekend there. I went to go see um, Academy Award nominated film uh, Downfall. Didn't win, but it's pretty good. Isn't that kind of like an artsy fartsy movie? No. No, it's a German movie. It had subtitles. What's wrong? You walk in, you're going to do some reading. Jimmy, what's wrong? Who spilled coffee over here? What's what is on my console? Oh, who spilled that? Rich Voss. Rich Voss spilled that the other day. It's just dirty and sticky under Why here. Why wouldn't it be cleaned up? Now clean it up! <laughs> I just hate mess. Yeah, it was Rich Voss. Calm down, he man. He was bumbling over some words and getting all nervous, and and he turned around and spilt his coffee. He spilt his coffee. Hey, uh, while, you know, while uh, Eric Eric cleans up uh, Jim Norton's area just really fast, because people were asking, believe it or not, they were asking. You know, I did the whole brother Weez thing. We went down uh-huh. Little Italy. They're like, wow, it sound like sound like you uh went to a really cool restaurant down there. Yeah. What was the name of it? Mm-hmm. Just want to mention that it was uh, Cannoli's in Little Italy on Mulberry Street there. Oh, okay. They gave us the so they gave us this back room at Cannoli's. The food was probably the best Italian food I've ever had in my life. Got, probably no, it, it it was the best food. It was the best Italian food I've had in my life at Cannoli's on Mulberry Street, in Little Italy. All right, so got uh, the back room. The, and uh, uh, you're not done. No, well, there, you, you know there were people we within were our party spot. that uh, you know they were, they have wine and beer. But if you need something a little, you know, a little, <clears throat> a little harder than that, they, they, they do take care of you. They got a little something, something that's going on in the basement. And they're now advertising on the show. Is that what I'm? Well, no. People on the oh, feedback, oh. they just want to know what restaurant I went to in Little Italy last oh, night. Okay. Because we were kind of quote celebrating, if you want to call it that, the whole brother Wee's, you know, yeah. cancer thing. So we all went down there to kind of get together <laughs> before we were going to start this cancer fight with Wee's and. Uh-huh. And uh, the listeners picked up on it. They said, geez, sound like a good restaurant down there. What is it? And next, who was that dinner Next with time you? I want to, you know, I go to Manhattan, I want to go to that restaurant. Who was with you, Weez, and, and who? Um, well, Tom, uh, Tommy Red and uh, Joey Clams and uh, Fat Anthony. And Fat Anthony was there. Yeah. And at Cannoli's in uh, Little Italy on Mulberry Street. Uh-huh. Ex- I mean, excellent food. And the, and the Italian pastries... And the little, the little, you know, the little espresso after the meal. It was, right, right. It was just top notch. The prices were just phenomenal. Good. No, no, this just doesn't sound like you're conveying a story of the weekend to the listeners. It kind of sounds like, uh, dude, it was my like whole weekend. I, I went to uh, Titties and Canarsie. I heard about Fever in Fort Lee. Sounds like just a great place to uh-huh. go. And then, uh, you know, this this Italian joint on on Mulberry Cannolis. Mm-hmm. For the love of God, it's it was. It was unbelievable. The love of God, it sounds great. All right. Oh. All right. I look forward to maybe seeing you there. Just really big portions and... Yeah. I don't know. You, you ask for Vinny, you get a free glass of wine. Oh, nice. You know, just tell him Opie sent you. Vinny will give you a free glass of wine, no problem. Just Is stuff coming in the front door and out the back door? I'm not, I don't know. I just know I sat there, had a really, really good meal. That's all I'm saying. I thought you didn't know anything about the restaurant business. You just go in, you order a meal. That's what you know about the <laughs> restaurant business. That's what I know. You know, Cannoli's, Mulberry Street, Little Italy. My God. My if God, man. If there's a fire, man. fuck you, pay me. <laughs> if there's a struck by lightning, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> I mean, Joey's. We used to go to Joey's and, you know. I'm, yeah. You know, Joey's place, but. Paisano. Can, there's Cannoli's, though. You like Ooh. that, huh? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Jeez, you really seem to like it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, Anthony, you saw this movie over the weekend? Uh, yeah. So, uh, Downfall. Any particular movie theater in Brooklyn you went to? Nothing I really want to plug or anything. No, I. It's just uh, actually great, Nick. I don't have to go to the Brooklyn mo- movie theaters anymore. Thank God. Thank God. It is so nice walking into a movie theater to see a movie and not feeling like you're going. Uh, into the weight room at uh, Rikers. <laughs> I could sit and watch the movie without worrying who's sitting behind me and uh, if maybe a knife is going to come through the back of my chair. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, people are talking on the cell phone and perhaps I gave a, a little look. Like, hey, people are trying to watch a movie. You're silly me. But those animals don't go to the artsy-fartsy theaters. It sounds like no. you're starting to go to the artsy-fartsy theaters. No, I wasn't going to artsy-fartsy. This was a movie I wanted to see. It's called Downfall. But is it's this movie German being movie. played in the regular movie theaters? That's not not wide release. It's yeah, because I select theaters. I haven't heard of it. Go no. ahead. It's, uh, it's a movie. It's made in Germany, so it's got subtitles. So you can be doing a little of that, but what they call reading when you go in there. 
the subtitles are so weird. When you go in, you're so conscious of it. You hate it at like first. Like at first, you're like, all right, I got to read quick, and then I got to look at the screen. I got to read. Now I got to look at what's going on. But uh, after like five or ten minutes, it's so second nature, you don't even think about you it. Get you get know? the rhythm down. You get the rhythm. And it, like movies like Das Boot, I watched that one with subtitles. Uh, it's great to just, you get so much more out of the movie when you're seeing them speaking in that language. That friggin' German language in World War II movies, it really makes the movie. I mean, they could be saying, hi, how are you, have a nice day, and it just sounds like the most angry shit coming out of their mouths. I love it. So, uh, yeah, uh, a downfall. Uh, it's Hitler, and uh, it, it's through kind of like the, through, through the eyes of one of his secretaries that kind of uh, was, was taking care of Hitler's business on the last days of his life before he killed himself in the bunker in uh, 45. Thanks for spoiling it. Yeah, uh, I ruined the end of that movie. <laughs> Uh, Hitler was dead the whole movie. Great. <laughs> Should have seen it. I see dead Jews, he said. <laughs> well, they actually weren't in Germany. They were in another time period. Uh-oh. And he was going, uh, why do you kill Jews? Why do you always ask me not to kill Jews? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I went to go see that, and uh, I was reading some reviews before I went to see the movie. And Because, um, you know, there couldn't be any spoilers in it. You know how it ends. Uh, so I'm reading some reviews, and some of the people were saying that... Uh, they they liked the movie, looked great, directed uh, very nicely, but they didn't like the fact that it humanized Hitler and some of these people like Joseph Goebbels and uh, Himmler and and you know the notorious Nazis and the SS and uh, but but I was thinking like they were humans, so if you're humanizing it, you can't just paint it with this monstrous brush all the time that that Hitler's just this monster and just portray him like that. I think it's more compelling and and shows his evil even more when you realize he was just a guy you know and he did give his dogs this little scratch behind the ear and you know make him lick his face and and he did have these tender moments with Ava and and the secretary and and stuff and and when they show that I guess people were sensitive because it was a movie made in Germany that they're like oh here are the Germans again you know yeah. You can't paint this guy with just a monster brush. You got to show him as a person. What was it? Did they have all the Jews running around with horns in the movie? <laughs> Red with tails, <laughs> stealing and killing. <laughs> Dirty Krauss. Uh, yeah, the movie actually was called The Passion of the Hitler, and they had the <laughs> Jews running around just hurting the poor guy. <laughs> Jesus. He's just trying to buy a pastry, and they're smacking it out of his hand. And, Taking his bank account. And you know how many Germans cut their hand as they were bashing the windows, storefronts on all the German uh, Jewish businesses? They cut themselves. Could have hurt themselves. Uh, the movie also tries to exonerate the German people as a whole for any responsibility in, uh, in World War II, saying that they, too, were victims. They, too, were victims of the, uh, Hitler and the Nazis at, the, at that point. There was really nothing they could do about it. Not all of them were Nazis and followers of Hitler and, and uh, followers of his ideology. And that, people see as kind of a cop-out also. They don't want the German people of that time exonerated. They're just as responsible for, for giving him the, the manpower he needed to do what he did. Uh, so as I'm watching the movie, I have this in mind, this whole humanizing thing. And they do show them acting as real people, which, again, they were. But there was one scene where, uh, and believe me, I'm in Great Neck. So I'm watching this movie in a movie theater. I, I went into the theater expecting it to be pretty empty. Uh, it was full of old Jewish, Jewish people that's, from Great Neck. You just described the audience when I went and saw Schindler's List. Really? Oh, man, you want to talk about uncomfortable. So now, but but you're sitting there, yeah, Schindler's List. I, I saw Schindler's List, and it was all old but Jewish the people Jews just were, crying their right. eyes out. I mean, it was brutal. The Jews were, were the sympathetic characters in Schindler's List. I'm watching a movie where they're kind of humanizing Nazis. Right, right, uh, right. So, believe me, they were a bit uncomfortable and shifting in the seats. You could see it was going on there. Do you think that people watching Schindler's List disliked your blue eyes and blonde hair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it was the. It was the right, there. I didn't think it was the right place for me. You sat there with your arms folded, going, <laughs> yeah. "Bullshit!" I, and I got to tell you, the casting in this movie, because it was made in Germany, those German soldiers. Unbelievable! The look of these guys in that German uniform and everything—they, because they're real German—they looked the part perfectly. It was frightening to watch. 
all with the uh, the SS officers in those goddamn snappy leather jackets and everything that they wore. You got to give it to the Germans in World War II. The best dressed army on the face of the globe. They really did look snappy. Those jackboots. <laughs> well, you take lemons and make lemonade. <laughs> yeah, well, why not? You got you know if one good thing came out of that war it was fashion. Lovely boots for kicking in the teeth of an old person. <laughs> Jesus. I'm essential to the war effort. Ah, oh, they were just so snappy when shooting the elderly. They really were well dressed. I like those jackets, those half coats and everything. Very nice. So, uh, there was a part in the movie where um, Albert Speer comes in. He's the guy. He was like the architect for uh, for the new Germany. Uh, Hitler uh, figured after the war was over and they won because it could ha- turn out no other way. Uh, Berlin was going to be built into like a new Rome. This was just going to be beautiful architecture all over. And Albert Speer was the guy that was going to uh, run this whole thing mm-hmm. and uh, design with Hitler this new Berlin. Uh, he was he, he was like a son to Hitler and Hitler was like a father to Albert Speer. So uh, toward the end, the very end, uh, Speer comes in. He's not going to stay in the bunker with <laughs> Hitler. He's leaving. So he's telling Hitler he's leaving. And he did not carry out Hitler's last order to him, which was blow up everything. I want everything destroyed. The German people don't deserve, because they lost this war, they don't deserve to live. They don't deserve, deserve civilization, buildings, trains. Everything was supposed to be blown what up. What a psycho, man. It was the scorched earth uh, right, right. The whole thing that Hitler wanted. He didn't want to leave anything for the Russians. He didn't feel the German people, because they lost the war, deserved anything. So it was just blow everything up. Uh, so Speer comes in and tells Hitler... You got all this from reading? Reading, yes, reading. I actually know about World War II before I saw this movie. I, I, I love uh, the World I'm War II. I'm starting to think you can learn a lot from just reading. Sometimes. It's amazing what you can pick up through letters, spelt out words on pages. It's quite amazing. So, yeah, I was reading the movie, and uh, Hitler, uh, he tells Hitler he didn't carry out his orders. So uh, Hitler is just completely disappointed. Anytime anybody told him they didn't carry out an order, he went into this rant and raving. He was a lunatic, you know, going crazy. But this time, he didn't go crazy on Speer. He just kind of told him to get out and put his head down. And a tear starts rolling down Hitler's cheek. He's so disappointed in Speer. Uh, so he's crying there on, on uh, camera. And uh, it's movie theater full of Jews, and maybe a little louder than I should have, I kind of went, Oh, poor Hitler! You did not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, uh, Is this an actor playing Hitler, or do they have? Yeah, footage? yeah. Do they have his name? Uh, Bruno Ganz. Do they have a uh, real footage of Hitler? That no, they no. It was inter- just interspliced. Just the actor. Do? He did a great job right. playing the old doddering, left hand shaking, just completely insane Hitler. And uh, yeah, it was one of those. And that was kind of a moment where I went, you know, back to the review of humanizing Hitler, where you, you kind of did feel bad for the guy. You're like. Not as Hitler. You better you explain. Th- you felt you bad explain. that he's an... Just as... No, this is very black and white. Not as Hitler and not as the monster as what he do- did, but just as an old guy being disappointed in this son-like figure not... Murdering out, his fellow citizens. Not murdering yeah. his... <laughs> no, no, you're right. No, yeah. I'm not saying... But that's... See, you're thinking of it in the way the reviewer did. The humanization of Hitler. I'm looking at it as an old guy... A father figure and a son figure being disappointed in in the younger guy. I understand that because a lot of times when my father would son tell me bitch. to go out and uh, and slaughter my fellow citizens <laughs> because they shamed him by losing a war where Jews were murdered, that my dad would drop a little tear. I definitely understand that. Don't leave me out. No, I, dude, I'm not even disagreeing with you. When you ask someone close to you to kill people because they didn't kill enough Jews. You suck. I'm not I, saying that. I'm getting emotional just thinking about <laughs> it. How disappointed he must have been. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sorry to murder all these people. You, you better explain. I love you like a father, Hitler. <laughs> but I'm sorry I couldn't kill all the people. I told you to keep the other preset for three fifty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I just completely out of the context of Hitler and Albert Speer. Yeah, absolutely. Snappy dressers. I almost felt bad for them. No, I hear you. They were good looking. They had a really nice uniforms, and that damn Speer let them down. And then when he had to give uh, one of those little capsules to um, to his dog, he, he, he took his dog's mouth, his dog that he loved, 
and uh, put the little capsule and crunch down on his snout, and you hear a little, <laughs> and his dog died, and you see him slowly like walk away, just you know, very, um, very sad that he had to kill his dog. Yeah, yeah, that was um, Jesus, man. And that, but but the real kicker in this movie was uh, was uh, uh, the Goebbels family, the little kids, uh, and Joseph Goebbels and his wife. Uh, they had six children, all beautiful little blonde-haired German children, brought to the bunker, singing little songs to the German soldiers as uh, Russian artillery is exploding overhead. And then uh, the mother takes them all into the uh, into one of the bedrooms in the bunker and gives them this uh, drink. Oh, my God. I had no idea about and, this. And the oldest daughter is looking as these little kids are taking the drink, knowing this is some type of uh, a poison. She thinks it's going to kill her, but it's actually a um, something to make them them sleep. So she's trying to give it to the older daughter, and the older daughter's like, "No, I don't want to drink this." They have to hold her down and open her mouth and pour this in. And the little kids go to sleep. About a couple hours later, the mother comes in with a bunch of the little capsules, and as they're sleeping, these oh little, my cute God. little German kids, she's putting the capsules in their mouth, crunching their jaw down, and you just see them go as they're sleeping. They go. <laughs> And just die right there in the bed. And then they pull. She pulls the sheet over their faces, exposing their cute little German feeties. Oh, <laughs> little tootsies. Little dead Nazi tootsies. <laughs> and then uh, Goebbels and his wife go outside and, and shoot each other, or he shoots her and, and shoots himself in the head. The gasoline comes out, burns them. So it was. Uh, it's a pretty intense movie. God, we really live different lives. You're, you're watching yeah. this movie, and I was watching uh, Bad News Bears over the weekend. Oh, you watched Bad News Bears? <laughs> I bought it on that. cable. I, I bought watched, that yesterday. I watched it, too. And I feel it was like, on cable. I feel like such a dirtbag that I'm not maybe, like, expanding my mind, you know? Why? It's the same thing at the end. Little blonde-haired it. youth goes, uh, hey, Russians, and throws the trophy at him. <laughs> I'm like, well, get your next war. He's describing this very intense movie experience, and I'm thinking, well, I saw a movie this weekend, too. Maybe yeah. I should share. It was the Bad News Bears. Little Tanner Himmler, he was my favorite. Tanner rocks. God, I'm like, geez, that, that's me. <laughs> Remake uh, of Bad News Bears coming out L- with, with Billy, no, Bob Thornton. Billy Bob Thornton and, and a bunch of other kids. You know they're going to ruin it. You, you know can't... there's going to be no drinking. You know yeah. they're not going to be making, At... making the martinis for Walter Matthau. Yeah. Driving, he's drinking and driving. Drinking and with driving. Kids in the car. Billy Bob Thornton might though, man. I don't know about that. Well, yeah. you know, he did do that uh, that Santa movie, Bad, Bad Santa. Santa. So maybe, maybe they'll go down that same road, you know, road and get crazy. But you it's know, unnecessary. It was a funny movie. Why remake it? I loved what a prick Vic Morrow was in that movie. What a prick! Holy crap! That's right. That's he's Vic the Morrow. father no, of uh, the courtship of Eddie's father. Kid, right, right. Who's the picture of. Uh, of the, the oh Yankees. Oh, my God. You know what? I was watching the movie last night, and I'm like, why is he so familiar? I, I, I totally, Vic Morrow. No, I know. I totally blanked until you just said that. Vic Morrow worked well with kids, right, until he got two of them decapitated. <laughs> right. <laughs> Old copter hat. <laughs> I was like, you're you're going to see this intense movie. Uh, I couldn't get in to see robots or whatever. Oh, robots. Because that was sold out all over the place. I, I like those movies when they come out. You yeah. know, I love The Incredibles. And uh, and I'm like, ah, all right, I'll watch Bad News Bears yeah. instead. SpongeBob. I would recommend Downfall if you're, um, especially good. if you're like a war buff, something like that. Mike. Good movie, done very well. They show just the lunacy of, of Nazi Germany, uh, especially right at the end in that bunker. All the officers and the women and Ava Braun um, having parties. She's holding a party and dancing and drinking as artillery is just shaking the shit out of the bunker. And they're all smiling, like, and can't, just cannot accept the fact that it's over. Hitler in his war room with maps, yelling at these generals that he wants these troops moved and and a counterattack must be mounted to push the Russians back. And then they show what's really happening out on the streets. There are no armies left. He's got these make-believe armies on this map, and it's just kids that are being shot and killed by Russian artillery out there in the streets. And he's he's talking like he's still got these armies, and, and people are looking at him like they still have hope that, you know, the uh, Germans are going to turn this around. Meanwhile, the Red Army is just closing in on Berlin. It's uh, it's really great movie. Check it out. Uh, all right. And then, you know, you could watch The Bad News Bears <laughs> <laughs> and Robots. <laughs> it's nice to know that the uh, Hitler film is a real tearjerker. Yeah. Let's uh, go. Someone wondering if uh, Hitler... Um, Kicked his dog in the liver. All right, listen. At the end, <laughs> listen. to kill him. Why does it no. always have to go there? 
Mike Chester, from, why are you crunching on that little cap? <laughs> Mike from Philly. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to ask if uh, Anthony's going to go to work for Panzerfaust. <laughs> no, I'm not working for Panzerfaust <laughs> Records. Himmler, shit dick. <laughs> Ted from Colorado. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hey, sweet Ted, how are you? I'm better now, thanks. Not you. All right. Hey, guys. Hey, Anthony, I wanted to know if uh, they portrayed Hitler doing uh, all the methamphetamines and shooting up dope. That's why he was so crazy, you know. No, in they, your, didn't, they uh, didn't go into... In the uh, movie where they're uh, portraying him as a human being. No, they didn't go into any drug use. I don't know how... Uh, Hitler, I don't think, was uh, was using drugs. I think that, uh, toward the end, the doctors were giving him stuff because he was insane, yeah, but I don't think he was doing things like heroin. The guy was kind of a health nut. He was a, a vegetarian, which really proves Bernie gets his point of uh, people being very peaceful. If everybody was vegetarians, yeah. meanwhile Hitler well, was a vegetarian. You don't even have to go there. Bernie gets proved it himself when he lost yeah. his mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those vegetarians, you got to watch them. Let's they showed Hitler, though, eating you know, and, and complimenting the chef on his cheese raviolis. You know, the guy liked uh, cheese ravioli. That does sound good right now, actually. Doesn't it? Yeah. I'll have the Hitler... I'm going to have to go see that movie. What is it called again? Downfall. Downfall. All yeah. right. Let me get to say, uh, let's say hi to Tad in so uh, San Francisco. Tad? Hey, I can bar barely hear you guys, as you know. But um, I just wanted to make a quick uh, movie recommendation for, uh, for Anthony. And that's a movie called Conspiracy. It was done by HBO a couple years ago. And it's about the meeting that the German high command, not all of them, but a few of them, got together to uh, lay out the final solution. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, Stanley Tucci and Kenneth Branagh, and it's probably the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life, that these people could sit in a room and just lay out this plan to kill millions and millions of people. Yeah. So right, it Sounds like a you know, feel-good movie. Is it scary? <laughs> oh, yeah, grudge? definitely. All right, thanks, Ted. Uh tool bag from New Orleans. No, I totally understand, Anthony. It bugs me, too, when I try to exterminate a race and just can't get it done. What? I wasn't saying that. No, I know Why, that. Why am I being painted like this? <laughs> yeah, it's great when, when you try to humanize Hitler. It's, uh, that always works. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of people on your side. The Sarge, what's up? Hey, o and Hey, little Jimbo. Hello, The Sarge. Hey, uh, there's a book you're talking about reading a book about a movie and then watching the movie and going back and forth uh, about Saving Private Ryan. It was a part that wasn't in the movie and it was played by uh, soon-to-be uh, career-killed uh, Vin Diesel's character, Caparzo. And uh, he's like, you know, Sarge, these beaches remind me of West Palm where Jim Norton's going to be performing it March 18th through the 20th at the Palm mm. Beach Improv. Very nice. No, that was kind of a really, way to go. really bad one. That was, was a good one. A, it would have been good. I would give props when it's good. That I didn't awful. see that coming. That was awful. Yeah, no, he, it was so roundabout. It was so out there. That's why I kind of liked it. An extra scene and saving Private Ryan. Vin Diesel? I'm like, Vin what? Vin Diesel. He was in that? On the beach. It was like, no, it, what? I just, I didn't see I, it coming. I... I saw something stupid coming. That's yeah. what the problem was. I didn't see a plug, but I saw something stupid coming. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, really fast, because we're talking about movies. We were going to talk about this Friday, the Star Wars trailer. Yeah. Saw that. Looks pretty good. It does look good. Looks good. You know, he's disappointed before, though. Some of the trailers look pretty good, and it turned out to be a stupid kitty movie. That first one was a goddamn kitty movie. He stinks. The one he made with the little kid in the goddamn speeder race. That stunk on ice. The second one was uh, Dawson's Creek in space, which is uh, that whining ass and, and uh, what's-her-facey there. I, eh. Now it's looking dark, evil, a lot of death, a lot of destruction, high body count. So uh, it looks like it's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those that, that says, uh, I love the, the, one, the people that say, that's it, I'm, all, I'm not seeing them anymore. Because you know you're going to see it. Right. You know you're going to see the Star Wars movie. Not, except Jim. I haven't seen Jim's any of the new ones. I'm not in, no interested in that like, crap. Piece. Have you seen the old ones? Of course. See? And I, I couldn't stand the stupid Ewoks. They were awful. That's, ruined that movie. And, and and the first one of the remakes was, uh, you know, visually I love them. They're great. But the stories just stink. Little Annie. Hey, Annie, you're going to win the speeder race? 
Ugh. <laughs> it was awful. Jar Jar Binks. He's a boob, George Lucas. I'm it, sorry. It, it was terrible. But this last one looks like the dark one that it's supposed to be. If you're setting up the prequel to the first one that was shown, the one with you know Luke Skywalker and stuff, there's no other way it could be than a dark movie because you know they're all they're they're in a pretty crappy situation in that first one, and you got to set up for that. So it's got to be dark. I think he knew that. I think he took some of the criticism from a lot of the fans. The fact the other ones were too light-hearted, nice, and, you know, kid-like. Yeah. And make it nice and dark. Looks good. High body count, you know? Anakin uh, goes out there and he kills a lot of Jedi. So, it can't be a light, fun movie. Just the fact that there's no Darth Vader yet, it's like, all right, get on with it. He's Darth at the end. Yeah, it's And he's still... kind of the, the beginnings of Darth Vader. It's still the best. It's one of the best bad guys ever created oh, yeah. in films, it, ever. It yep. ends with him being Darth, though. You like, can't... You can't like jump yeah. ahead. It's that's the whole thing. I'm sure yeah. it is, but you got to put more. Dar probably some new Darth Vader footage. That would be interesting. But there, there is at the end of the movie. He's got to become Darth Vader. You show him, and, and he is Vader in this one. He's just the Vader before the costume. Yeah. It shows how he turns into the evil bastard. Then. How about by part two they do that, and then part yeah. three is all new Vader footage. Yeah. How about that? Stop with the faggoty characters, you didn't weak, you feel, irrelevant idiots. Didn't you feel bad for Vader when they took the helmet off and he was kind of crying for Luke at the end? Kind of <laughs> felt bad for him. An Jeez. old guy looking <laughs> at his yeah. young right, son right. and he, like he couldn't... <laughs> Peter Cushing came in and said, Look, I know you told me to destroy the planet, but I just couldn't blow it up. And he dropped a little tear. Millions of lives <laughs> snuffed out in an instant yeah. when the uh, Death Star blew up the planet. But I kind of felt bad for him there. Hey, you know, um, I did too. Anthony, before we go to break, yeah. I, I noticed uh, next to your computer those poker chips. Yeah, I got to bring those home. What do you think? I like them. Really cool, right? They're pretty cool. They're very pro. Yeah, somebody uh, carrying case. If I take my game on the road. <laughs> yeah, somebody sent you uh, the top of the line poker chips. Top of the line poker chips. Ooh. Huh? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Just somebody thought yeah. Anthony might, you know, like poker chips. <laughs> yeah. It comes in in what? Like a nice metal case. You saw metal, it, right? Metal case. A couple of decks of cards. Right. Yeah, that was very cool. Have you heard of uh, sweets and um, or sweets or or suits? Suits, I think. Suits in Staten Island. Suits in Staten Island. Because I know you like the poker and yeah. you, got, you got the po here they are the poker Never chips. Never heard of it. Eric brought them in. Oh, open that case up. And I uh, got an anonymous uh, present from one of our listeners. It's uh, top of the line poker chips. Look at that. Oh. Here, want you Jeez. to. Listen how heavy they are. Nice, right? These are the real deal. And you like your poker, right? I sure do. Got the place for you, man. Yeah. It's called Suits in Staten Island. Yeah. And it's a little out of the way place. You can't really... What? Well, you're liking the poker chips, right? I definitely dig the chips, yeah. Here, make that noise again. Look how oh, heavy they are. They're very... See? Real, Top of the line. Real clay chips. You walk into a, a casino, and you hear this sound... Just amplified by a hundred people doing it. That sound just gets me. Can I see one, Eric? I love it. You like though, right? And you yeah. like your poker. Yeah. Well, I found the place for you. I oh and, and uh, it's out of the. It's you got of... any connection to this place? Have you been there? How do you know about it, Opie? Why are you plugging it on the show? No, it's just that I just know you like poker, and you know we're friends, and I figured you know Suits in Staten Island is the place for you. Is Spider making the drinks? It's just. It... <laughs> It's just out of the way, you know. You, it's not a very obvious place. Uh huh. I'll give you the address after the show. I, if, if listeners want to, maybe I don't know, play a little like poker, or maybe the slots that they have in the back. They back. got slots in the back room. A couple blackjack tables, but it's mostly a poker place. Poker. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I should go there. I was thinking. If you want to send me there. Well, it. it I. You know, I just know you're a poker fan. Yeah. I, I, I think it would be a, a very, very cool thing for you to check this place out. How about I just have a friendly game with people I know in my house, and I don't go to, where is this? You don't want to go to Suits in Staten Island? Su in Staten Island? Nah. You sure? Nah. nah. Staten Island, too much water around Staten Island. Too many opportunities to maybe slip off the edge of Staten Island and end up in a river somewhere. Ooh, nice little place off Toad Hill Road. <laughs> yeah, Nice. You gotta ask for, you know, you have to ask for somebody. You can't just, you know, you, you have to go. Oh, really? Around back? And well, you park your car around back. Say, Fat Anthony sent me. Uh, I'm not. I don't think. I shouldn't use Fat Anthony no, as a no, reference. No, 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 no. You don't. No, no, no. Fat Anthony has nothing to do with suits in Staten Island. Right. 
But okay. I think you would enjoy it. Maybe on a Friday night you go up there, play a little, just a little, and then maybe, maybe I don't know, you you come back on the show next Monday and just, you know, tell me how talk it was. Talk about it? Yeah, just a little bit. We'll talk about it? It's a little. they got a nice game going on. Uh-huh. Nice game. Mostly on the weekends, but we could get a little private game going if you want. All right. I'll have to uh, look into that. Suits. Suits in Staten Island. You, you like the poker chips, right? Oh, I dig them. Why, where they come from? You, you like them, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh-oh. No, you'll, here, I'll, here, here's your poker chips back. Just mm. just enjoy, okay? Hey, here's your poker chips. Uh, enjoy. There consider you go. Consider this a gift. There you go. Uh, someday and that day may never come, you may be asked to play poker at an establishment. <laughs> All right, glad Suits to Staten Island, if, you know. I'll give you the address off air. I just think you're unlucky. Huh? <laughs> what? No, I'm just talking about Your the... Your casinos uh... lose money. All right, we should take a break, don't Anthony. talk to a man like Mo Green like that. <laughs> Mike! <laughs> and you walk... <laughs> and he walks... <laughs> the dancers will kick your tongue out. <laughs> These evil angel cards are so sexy. Yeah, well, well, Anthony got the real, uh, the real playing cards, and then uh, someone also sent in a. Uh, Yoshi, I'm sure. Someone sent in, uh, yeah. yeah. Evil Angel, the porn company. They have these cards. They're hardcore. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, hardcore porno playing cards. Wow, these are great. I don't care how many Dago, Guinea, what greaseball goombas come out of the woodwork. Oh Jesus. Anthony, why don't we take a break? All right. You like the poker chips, though? Oh, I really like them. Okay. <laughs> I'm digging them. Cool. And you would you would at least consider going to Suits and Staten Island, yeah, right? Yeah, consider it. Okay, good. Um, when we come back, you know how we talk about that gerbil story? It's something we talk about from time to time on the program. In, uh, in yes. Re- in retrospect, lighting the match, right. blah, blah, blah. Who hasn't gotten that one in their email uh, years ago? Well, we, f- we found... Um, we found an actual, you know, newscaster that did the story as as, as real. a real news story really? that started the whole phenomenon, oh where God, people man. thought this was a real story, even though it was like some kind of uh, urban legend thing. Oh, I'm all that, in. That went uh, mainstream. Where's the ace of spades, Eric? So, we'll get into that. We got to talk about these guys in the paper doing the homo picture. Oh, these guys fell for it. They fell for it. We'll explain next. Listen, oh, to, your pal, listen to your pal's O and A, and never fall for that gag. That oh. old gag. Also, uh, Jacko to Hacko at Boyd today. What? That's That's the latest uh, headline on Michael oh. Jackson. Jacko to Hacko. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. These idiots in the paper. That's the New York Post. They love that. It rhymes. Yeah. yeah. Jacko to Hacko. They can't get enough of the Jacko headline. Well, Jacko's... They love it. Jacko's team is going to be, you know, cross-examining the, uh, the accused. The Post or... loves doing that. Look at the ace of spades. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, figures it's an ace of spades. <laughs> <laughs> There's a young girl about to enjoy a, a, a penis which happens to be dark with a pink head, <laughs> and you can't even see the guy in it. The dick just no. cuts across the entire card. <laughs> <laughs> it's really frightening. you got to respect this guy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he shows up. His body is on, like, the two. <laughs> 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 hey, Ben, we have the Sunday papers. Yes. Get the papers. Get the papers. All right. They had, <laughs> they had some of Leno's. They had some of Leno's lines. He is just going all out with this Jack. Dude, on the I'm Jacko. telling you, Leno's He's basically guy. doing pedophile humor every yeah. night on NBC, and yeah. I'm starting to, I'm starting to believe that he's the man. I, I didn't like the Leno. Dude, he, he, the fact that he will do that, Letterman. You watch the way Letterman will tap dance around this and do a top ten list, which is irrelevant to what's going on. Top ten reasons uh, Michael Jackson can't buy brown shoes. <laughs> oh, he's a host. Yes. It, do we have the post? Because it's going to be number the... two. He's bad, but not as bad as he used to be. <laughs> the post just look for uh, look yeah. for a wacko reference. A jacko. They love the jacko. All right, we'll find it after break. But they just they did some of the best lines that he's done so far, and I can't believe it. It's pedophile humor. And you wonder why the Tonight Show is just beating the dog shit out of it. It's great. They're killing yeah. Letterman. Well, here's a little sample from uh, Leno's monologue. This is when he had the other comedians, uh, you know, standing in for him. Great. Check this one. I think this is the Drew Carey one. Well, according to a story just released today, Michael Jackson is broke. 
Really? ABC is reporting that he is not able to make his payroll for the Neverland Ranch. Given how broke he is, last night at the dinner table, the kid said, Llama again? <laughs> now, as you know, I have been called as a witness in the Michael Jackson. They're ruling on, on my gag order tomorrow to see if I'm allowed to tell jokes. Oh, really? I am not legally allowed to tell Michael Jackson jokes, but I can still write them. So we are now bringing in surrogate comedians. All right. Guest comedians. Please welcome a great stand-up comic. Next Thursday, he'll be in Albuquerque watching the U.S. play Honduras in soccer. Do you know that? <laughs> Please welcome my good friend, Drew Carey. Drew, come on out. Nice to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, Michael Jackson uh, showed up in court late today wearing his, his uh, pajama bottoms. Uh, you know what? We find the kid wearing the pajama top. We have another court case on our hands. Yeah. yeah, he showed up at court. He was uh, looking stiff, awkward. He had difficulty moving. Hey, maybe he is really white. <clears throat> <laughs> the official word for the Jackson camp is he has a hurt back. Hey, kids are heavier now. What are you going to do? <laughs> What does, uh, what does Michael Jackson call a school bus? Veals on wheels, everybody. You got the hand right here. You got the hand right here. You got the hand up while you do it. Yeah, yeah. You know where uh, Michael's two favorite places to go on vacation are? Uh, Youngstown and Boise. <laughs> what, is, uh, what does Michael Jackson never say after having sex? Why don't you grow up? <laughs> This is really, this is disturbing. This is disturbing? Disturbing. Wanna, disturbing. This is going to be disturbing. Uh, the accuser's brother testified that Michael Jackson walked around naked and aroused. And here's the creepy part. It was at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. that, was the, that was the creepy part, that it was yeah. at Chuck E. Cheese. Yesterday, we heard testimony from the accuser's younger brother, or as Michael calls him, Plan B. <laughs> Yeah, observers say that Michael rarely looked at his accuser on the stand, and, uh, well, of course he didn't. The kid's 15 now. <laughs> there is nothing quite like a Cuban cigar. Right, Ramon? The rich texture, the full flavor, so relaxing. Oh, fiddlesticks. No ashtray. Ramon, open your mouth. Anthony.